And so for me, Produce Like a Pro has always been about, you know, you being as valuable as Fred Famous, who's sold 100 million records. What's, what's the difference? I mean, you and I know the differences the artists we work with quite often. I'm here today with uh, Warren Hewitt, who just recently released a brand new book together with uh, Jerry Hammack, right? Yes, Jerry Hammack. I'm really excited about this because, uh, I mean, there is a lot of good books, but I'm more excited when someone... Um, I mean, you have let me stay at your house. I, I think I can consider you a friend. So I'm really excited to have a friend releasing a book. <laughs> you're a very good friend of mine, Alf. You're, you're, that's very Swedish of you to say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've stayed at your house. I consider you a friend. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm very excited. And, and, and big shout out to Jerry. You know, I think I think a lot of a lot of these books get written. I was thinking about this the other day um, by, you know, producers and mixers and stuff like that. And then they they don't credit the person that they wrote it with, you know, and how can I not credit? You know, they, they, they put their name on it, but, you know, it was kind of written with somebody. Jerry wrote all of these books on the Beatles recording techniques and. I thought if I'm going to write a book with somebody, I want to write with with somebody who understands how to write, you know, a technical manual as well. Because yes, it's hundreds and hundreds of hours, three years worth of conversations and us going backwards and forwards about how I do things. But more importantly, actually just as importantly, I should say, it's all of the people I interviewed. Because I've interviewed like Bob Clearmountain and Chris Lord Algae and, you know, every major producer, engineer and mixer you could think of, a mastering engineer. And I asked them a million questions. So I've got like all of their information that I've assimilated in here as well. And then you add in Jerry, who did all that research on the Beatles recording techniques, and he's able to, you know, make it into a manual that is just ridiculously detailed. Um, yeah, it, it was a blessing to be able to work with somebody that talented who's also, again, which is interesting, you know, we never met in person. Oh, really? I've been working with this and for three years with him. He lives in Canada and he's finally flying down in two weeks uh, to do some promotional stuff with me oh, on nice. it. But we just talk like this. <laughs> you, you and I know each Amazing. other. I mean, you and, yeah. I, you and I have met, met each other many times at different yeah. shows and stuff like that. But um, Jerry, I... I I consider him one of my best friends. And then I was just thinking to myself this morning, we've never actually been in the same room. We've always just been virtually talking like this. Isn't that surreal? That's amazing. I mean, I've, there was a podcast way back called The Home Recording Show, where the two hosts never met in real life, uh, wow. which was also a bit weird, but it's cool. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, one thing I think is really nice with the book, because I, I read a lot of books when I was uh, studying uh, university. I feel like a lot of the time the books are either really, really technical or really, really artsy. And I right. feel like this book ties it together really nicely. Uh, Thank is you. Is that something you had in mind? or Very much so. Um, when I, I've been doing interviews with people asking me about, you know, Produce Like a Pro and how it all ties in. And I always answer with Produce Like a Pro. When, when we started it as a YouTube channel, like about eight years ago now, I think it's eight in August. When we started it, um, uh, there was Graham Cochran with Recording Revolution who was talking yeah. to all the home, home studio owners. And then, of course, there was Pensado who was talking to like all these really incredibly successful producers, engineers and mixers. And I was like, that's great. But where's the bit in the middle? And so for me, Produce Like a Pro has always been about, you know, you being as valuable as Fred Famous, who's sold 100 million records. What's, what's the difference? I mean, you and I know the differences the artists we work with quite often. And I know really, really talented people that make incredible sounding records that you've never heard of. And that's just as valid. And, and also in some ways, kind of a little bit more compelling of the story, isn't it? Because you, you go and hang out with somebody who's making these great sounding records and they've got inexpensive equipment, but they just have a good ear and a great attitude and they know how to get really incredible performances out of musicians. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's really valuable information. So as you're pointing out, it's a combination of all of that. It's definitely got all of the technical. It definitely answers questions. But it's very pragmatic because I was talking to somebody else about this the other day. Like, I, I think you have to ask yourself as a producer, an engineer, a mixer, what, 
what what are you looking to do? If you're looking to record uh, a lot of live musicians, um, your your needs are very different from somebody who's maybe wants to do EDM music that maybe only needs an interface with even possibly one input because they're using virtual instruments. And maybe they're recording stuff into Ableton and then you know sampling into there, then manipulating it. They still might only need one microphone input. So there's a lot of that pragmatic approach. Like another thing I talk about is like, you know, if you've got a four input interface and you want to record a live band, one of the biggest solutions and best solutions is to go out and buy a used like 80s or 90s console. You can get like a Soundcraft or Soundtracks for like a grand or two that has like 24 mic pre's built into it and then submix that, bust that into the four inputs. It's Makes perfect sense. You know, just pragmatic, practical ways of looking at doing this and getting you making music rather than just kind of coming from a, dare I say it, sort of elitist point of view of like, oh no, you can't do it like that. You know, it's very pra that's practical and connecting, like you said, between the technical and and the kind of uh, creative is super, super important to me. I really like those parts in the book where you're talking also about uh, like the personal relationships you have as a producer and as an engineer with how you work with artists and bands uh, and that connection, how important it is. And also you talked about choosing what kind of artists or what kind of clients you want to have and who you want to work with, which I also think is a very, very important part. And I'm really happy you brought it up in this book. Thank you. I, and I agree. I think it's super important. I think one of the, one of the sort of, things that um i really want to encourage um is listen to your artist <laughs> you know, listen to them <laughs> listen to them it's, it starts right from the root of like i'm sure you understand this somebody sends you an email and says hey oh i uh, i saw or i heard something you did i'm interested in working with you how much do you charge to do you know a mix or produce yeah. or I, I never respond with the price the first thing i always say is like can i hear your music yeah because that's but if you're going back and going, I charge blah, 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 amount of euros or dollars or whatever it is, it, it, it just, it's not the way to build a relationship. And also, I don't charge a set fee. I don't know about you. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not saying I charge a different fee because I dislike or like something. I charge a set fee. I, I charge a price based on how much work it's going to take. So if somebody sends me something and it's an acoustic guitar and vocal, and that's all it needs to be. I don't yeah. go, it's $5,000. No. I think to myself, I can do that in four or five hours. I could sit with them yeah. and work on the arrangement a little bit. And in about four or five hours, I could record a really nice vocal. So I work it on the amount of time it's going to take me. But if somebody sends me something and it's cinematic metal, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's got like, with orchestration and like huge synth parts and background vocals, I'm not going to estimate it's going to take me four or five hours. If, especially if it's an EP, I might say, look, to do this properly, because you're a live band, we're going to have to rehearse, we're going to get into pre-production, and then we're going to have to go into a room big enough to capture your, a live performance together. Yeah. And that's a whole different price structure. And for me, those, those also connect you to the artist. To get back to your original point, it's those kinds of things that connect you to the artist, because the artist starts thinking, oh, this producer actually cares about me. To be honest, I sometimes reply with just prices. I can sometimes tell when, when that's appropriate, when a band is, yeah, they just want the price and we go. Otherwise, I usually ask for some kind of, um, if they have a budget, like this is what we have to work with. And then I can lay out a sort of a plan, what we can do around that budget to make, it, make sure it works. Um, but the way you're talking about it also makes perfect sense, I think. Yeah, and I, and I do the second part of what you said there. I also do a lot as well. So um, let's just say they want five songs, but they've got three thousand dollars. That's going to be very difficult to do if they're a full live band. There's no way I can personally make any money out of that if I'm going to go and hire a, a bigger room than the room we've got. So maybe I do it in our smaller room where I can't have the seven piece band in there, and we do overdub. And we do overdubs, but it might also be more appropriate for me to cut bass and drums here, and then they do their guitar overdubs on their own. Yeah, that's also then I mix really it. Yeah, very good solution. Yeah, sometimes it's uh, it's, I mean, especially in these days of reamping and incredible mm. virtual instruments, it's just like print it, but give me a DI. 
and then it gives me a di and if i don't like what the sounds they've got i can reamp it you know i've got got a handful of, of the, the the classic amps that we all love you know some marshalls i know really, i've really seen love a collection <laughs> yeah and it's but it's just like it's it's just yeah. a you know the usual kind of things i really like the angle i've got Ed, one of eddie van halen's you know later amps which massive for huge chugging guitars it's just awesome yeah. i really like the angle as well um it's kind of a souped up Marshall, you know, that artist series one. Yeah, yeah. Big fan of that. And then, of course, you know, that's actually Eric's amp, the classic Mesa Boogie. So I think between those kind of like four styles of amps, you know, I've got everything covered. I don't have anything like an orange. I should get something like that. I do have a Vox AC100, which is very unique sounding. I think an orange is, would be good. Um, I know Christian loves the orange and manages to get some really good heavy tones. I really like the oranges too. I don't have one currently but i'm really uh, curious about the the newer solid state ones that's supposed to sound like the tube ones the super crush 100 or something uh, i wouldn't be surprised if they did are you coming out to nam this year aren't you yes okay great oh, yeah. great yeah so we got we, we we got an airbnb although they gave us very strict instructions not to be loud so just oh. letting you know <laughs> but we have an airbnb and uh we're, we're buying a new studio we actually just bought it um all right so but we won't be in it by we're not moving in until the beginning of may so you'll still be able to stay in this one while you're here oh really i was going to ask yeah. you so well, there you go <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um but um yeah so yeah it, 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 i i think what you and i should do let's just go and hit up orange you and i should go over there and say hey <laughs> <laughs> let's do it i i i well, Eng Engel's the only company that I've ever kind of done any sort of endorsement with because they were very they were very generous and they came over and gave me a couple of amps to try out and they did eventually let me keep them. So I have a couple of free amps and that doesn't happen with guitar stuff. You know, uh, Yamaha have been good, but I, I the first half a dozen Yamahas I got, I got I bought. I didn't yeah. get them for, I got a couple of free things afterwards. Um, and I think that's usually, I don't know about you, that's usually my relationships with companies is like, I buy a product and then I become mm. friends with them afterwards. I'm not too good at being forced on something like, here, try this. It's like, yeah, I'll try nah, it. The companies I have been working with and doing videos for, I already know that I like. Uh, I have done a few reviews where I'm not particularly impressed, uh, but I always feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I rather not, be honest. I, I, I rather not uh, reviewing something I don't like in that case. People often ask me about certain pieces of equipment and why I haven't reviewed them. And there's been a few things that I've been sent and I've not reviewed them. And it's better to review something by omission. So if oh, there's yeah, a yeah, reason yeah. why something mm. new comes out and I haven't reviewed it, mm. You can you can understand what I might think of it. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff goes through through your channel, so. Yeah, yeah, and there's there's stuff I consistently love, and um, you know, there's certain companies I love, and I talk a lot about that. Um, but what I decided to do with the book with Jerry and was very important to me was make sure I didn't I didn't leave any stone unturned. The other day I was talking about this with with like um, some of the Presona stuff. Like, I haven't done a lot of stuff with Studio One because I don't use it. And of course, they, they're pre-sold such their DAW. But I do realize that, you know, we reviewed um, the Quantum 2626 up here, for instance. And people love that. And it's really good value for money. Um, is is and, it for 48 ins and out or is it that's, 32? That, uh, maybe it's expandable. I mean, um, oh no, no, no. I, I I mixed it up with another one, but it's also Presonus, I think, who has that has yeah. th thirty two ins and outs in one. Yeah, I mean, it's super. It's super affordable um, and sounds great. And it, I felt like for me that I, 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 it was really important that the book showcases everything, mm. everything. There's no stone left unturned, so that you really get a balanced view. And an unbiased balanced view of equipment as well to me it's everything it's like how do you record something mm. from a really basic instrument what what microphone you should choose i mean it's we've got stuff on metal we've got stuff on punk folk orchestra jazz edm it's like there's no genre that's not covered in there and um to me you know 
as that old Duke Ellington quote, there's only two types yeah. of music, good and bad. <laughs> but I think it's really good that you cover everything because we talked a little about before, like choosing, having a vision on what kind of clients you want to work with. And that's something I did like many years ago. Now. I, I weeded out the kinds of clients and genres that I didn't want to work on and focused all my marketing on what I do want. But even though, I mean, there always comes clients that want to record with me, even though I'm not specialized in their kind of music. And then a book like this can be gold worth when you can just find something about how, how the heck do I mic up a violin or whatever. I mean, yeah, you just, okay, I'll do it like this. <laughs> it's no problem. I mean, that, the reason why, thank you, it's a great point. Thank you for, for making it. Um, the home reason why it's called Home Studio Recording, The Complete Guide, is for precisely what you said. So let's just say you are predominantly, like in your instance, like rock, metal, punk kind of area. Um, but they turn up and they want a quartet on it. This book's for you. You can open it up and you can find out how to record orchestral instruments. Um, if you, I think for many, many people that want to make a living at doing this, like myself, I've learned to do everything. I mean, I've, I did, I've done, I was talking about this yesterday because I've forgotten some of my past. Um, you know, one of the biggest areas I learned in was doing a lot of live recording and mixing. And in that I got to do the Chili Peppers. I got to do the Ramones. I got to do, um, um, Joe Strummer. And so I got a lot of like, a lot and a lot of kind of like punk bands and stuff like that when I first moved to LA and I would record them live and then mix them. And, um, that was a really great for my resume. I was thinking about the other day. I, when I, when it, when I do, when people ask me what my credits are, I usually go like the fray and Aerosmith and maybe James Blunt. Cause they're all like big bands, but I could do, you know, the fray Aerosmith, James Blunt, Ramones, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's just weird because they're like live records that I made with them, like live DVDs. I did Black Veil Brides. Black Veil Brides is pretty heavy. I know it's like considered to be quite pop and, and, the, and, the, and the cool kids don't like it because girls like the band because Andy's very good looking. <laughs> you know how that works. Yeah, if the yeah. singer's really good looking, everyone's like, yeah, they suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they sold lots of records. They suck. <laughs> but yeah, all joking aside, um, the thing about the book is, is like for most people that want to do this professionally for a living, myself included, I had to get good at everything. Um, now, does that mean I'm the world's greatest violin recordist? You know, no, there's people like Olga Fitzroy who, who, who records strings for like Radiohead. You know, if you don't need me, if you want the best, go and hire Olga. You know, she's incredible. If there's no but if there's no worry about budget, go hire the best. But my point is, is for a day to day, what we used to call jobbing, like a jobbing person, somebody who's like got an got a um, a vocal overdub, a guitar overdub, a full band, um, doing vocals on an EDM track one day, maybe doing a rap on another one. You know, that's a lot of work for home studio people, people that have their own, or even a small commercial facility. That's what this book is written for. It's for somebody who wants to know a bit of everything, wants every single thing covered. And doesn't mean that you can't get it if you're metal. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't because it's going to have a bit of that in that as well. But it's, it's, it's for somebody that really seriously wants to learn every aspect of recording. And, you know, you can buy books on mixing, but there's mixing in it. You know, there's like, you could buy five different books and add up to the same 453 pages and spend three times as much, or you could just buy one book and get it all. That's why we call it the complete guide. And I also talked to a lot of publishing companies and didn't like any of the things and realized they, they were, they were monolithic and old fashioned and slow. Um, God <laughs> bless them all. And realized that if we self publish, we can update regularly. We can add things, you know, we, we can really make this as, as new products come out, we can add them to it. We can really talk about AI. We, we do touch on a little bit in it, but it's not really there yet to the level that's, that's worth having. But, as AI gets better, we'll update it. It's just, it just seems like a, it's just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And for me, you know, I take this seriously. I love this. This is all I know, know how to do. You know, I always tell people, just ask my wife. I'm useless at everything else. <laughs> you met my wife. She's Polish. Yeah. She would yeah. agree. Yeah. 
you, you, <laughs> so so I just poured my heart and soul into this and, and and like I said without Jerry there's there's no book um and uh his brain was just amazing to organize it I'm writing a keynote speech at the moment for a university I go to uh, I'm going to speak at and uh you know we're talking a lot about the book and I'm just doing it with Jerry I'm like I I don't uh, when you find somebody that understands you and can relate to you and can take the information and present it in a really amazing way, it's worth his weight in gold. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. One thing I thought was also really nice that you brought up in a book that I haven't read in any of the other recording books that I read is about interns and assistants, uh, right. a little bit on how to work with that. And I also really liked that you pointed out that an intern shouldn't just be, a, what, what do you call it? free free workforce <laughs> it's really important to us it's been it's been difficult though in some cases you know because you want you want you want to pay your interns and you want to give them but you have to figure out what they what where to where to put them and i encourage anybody that's interning make yourself irreplaceable just make just make it so that they like have to pay you because they're just like oh my god what are we going to do if this guy or girl leaves and goes to work for somebody else. What are you going to do? Uh, the last three people we've had, we were dying to 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 keep them, and they had other opportunities that were. I can imagine in in LA that uh, the people are a bit more hungry. I had a, I had a lot of interns, and to be honest, I only had one or two that's been worth like actually employing afterwards. So I now now I turned one of them into an assistant. And great. And it's not only, I mean, a lot of them are really, really good at the technical point. But the reason I gave this job to this guy was that he's also really good at the social. Uh, he really knows how to talk to the bands and make them feel comfortable. And I, I feel comfortable leaving him alone with a band if I have to do something and get out of the studio for a few hours. I can just amazing. leave him there and I know everything just runs. <laughs> it's That's amazing. incredible. So he's, he's like your mini me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's he's Ulf, Ulf uh, Junior, Ulf exactly. Part Two. Does did he has he grown a beard and he's wearing a beanie? Just so you know. No, unfortunately. Wait, tell him. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> just like when he's sleeping one night, just put a yeah. nose ring on him. Yeah. <laughs> like ah, what happened? Like nothing. You better Don't watch look in yourself. the mirror. Oliver, <laughs> look out! <laughs> I'm coming for you. It's a bit like uh, my friend Scott Devine has that channel Scott's Bass Lessons, yeah. and uh, he he the guy who also does the channel with him now is bald, wears glasses, <laughs> and it's just like and 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 I'm like, dude, how did you find like a, a doppelganger of yourself? So that, <laughs> it's genius because like a casual person is just going to be like, oh, that's the same guy, isn't it? It's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. genius. Alf, thank you ever so much for having me on the channel. Here's the book. Um, it's Home Studio Recording, The Complete Guide. I'm sure Alf is going to put a link down below to get it. Um, I, I, I'm really, really proud of it, and I'm really happy that you had me on the channel talking about it. I love I what you do. I need to set up an affiliate Amazon link. So. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do yeah, it. Th thanks so much for coming on and talking about it. I'm really excited about this. Uh, as I said, always... So much more fun when someone you know personally releases books and uh, stuff like that. Amazing. Thank you. I really, really appreciate you having me on. I love what you do. You're, there's another aspect, I think, that we, we talk a little bit about that is the sort of DIY uh, part of it. Because I, one of the things about growing up poor in England was my dad just made everything and fixed yeah. everything. Yeah, so you, <laughs> men you mentioned hairball audio DIY kits in the books too. So. Yeah, I, I think it's important to... To, to look at all of it because there's also a lot of us that are uh, engineers that love soldering things and building stuff and um that's a big, big component we have a lot of people that follow us that are also building their own mic pre's and not quite to the level you're building stuff with mics and things like that yeah. but they're, they're, they're trying <laughs> yeah anyways thank you so much Cheers. thank you all and, i really uh, appreciate it see you soon <laughs>